Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again, introducing you to my Uncharted 3 Crushing Difficulty video walkthrough. This is the 14th level of the game and it's entitled Cruising for a Bruising. And this is another hard level. There, there are a lot of sections that are simple, there are a lot of sections that you'll have no issue with, but there are one or two firefights on this boat that really, really take the cake when they want to. Not too sure where they take the cake, but boy do they take it. And it's no joke. The The first one is going to be a, your, your first introduction to the light machine gun heavy, and it's hard. The second one is going to be when you first enter into like a ballroom with two massive chandeliers. That is a really tough fight as well. But the start is simple. You just have to do the, the climbing, you just have to do all the, the cinematic moments that you're so used to when you play Uncharted these days. And look for anything remotely yellow like this crane so that you can walk along and get to your next vantage point. And for the most, like I said, it's not too bad. This level in itself though is fascinating man. How they've managed to do what they do on this level is just amazing. The, it's just a testament to passionate game developers that are really really good at their job. And it's just a shame that there, were mo there weren't more companies that were willing to do this kind of attention to detail and this kind of, you know, just pure love. And I know they get a lot of budget and they probably get paid a lot, but it doesn't matter. We need more of it. We need a hell of a lot more of it. Instead of paying $10 million on all these shit films in fucking Hollywood, give it to these development studios. They just make so much better products. It's, it's unbelievable how much money can help. And... This game is no different because it's clearly got a really big budget, but this is the first difficult section. So, the start of this, all these, these crates are going to fall down, all these containers, and you're going to have a gunfight with a bunch of dudes. As soon as you kill the dudes, the heavy's going to drop in. The reason this is hard is the, the boat is moving, so so is the cover, and it becomes real annoying. The only things that don't move are the containers, but there's one of them that does. So, here's the start of the fight. There's about four or five guys... Kill them as quick as you can. Uh, try and pick up their ammo as fast as you can as well, because when this heavy guy comes, he takes a pounding. He takes a real beating. And if you've got two grenades like I have, they're, they're really going to help. The grenades are super useful. And look at this dickhead. Super close and somehow still doesn't kill me. I don't know how I'm alive right then, but I am. So thank heavens for that. And this dude just wants to run around like a bitch. There's the water moving the cover. And the section with the heavy... There is a spot that I used on hard where they, they can only shoot you a little bit and you can cheese them, but it takes a long time. And I'm going to show you the spot at the end of this video. But as soon as the heavy jumps in, you want to throw your grenades at him. Then you want to use the cover trick to shoot him as best you can while he can't shoot you. Shoot as much as physically possible, and as soon as he starts to come near you, you want to run away from him. One thing that's really random and really useful on this level though, the cover moves, and if the cover moves into him on one of the, the tidal moments, it will kill him instantly, the box will crush him, but it's, it's kind of rare that it does this. I've seen it happen in a video, and for me I had to shoot him a lot for him to die, but sometimes it seems like he takes a massive beating, and you want to be prepared for that. Once he dies though, pick up his, his RPK thing, his light machine gun, and kill his buddies, because this is probably the most powerful gun on the game when it comes for, for damage. It just destroys people. And uh, you do move slow with it though, so be, be very careful, because you can get lit up real quick if you're not careful. And uh, the spot that I use to cheese these, if, you, if this doesn't work for you, if for whatever reason you're having trouble, is on top of these cargo crates. If you jump up onto this, you can move to the right into this little hovel. And what will happen is, they can still see you, but they can only see you for brief moments. And if you move from cover to cover, they can't quite get a good vantage on you. And you can keep cheesing them with your guns. It takes a long time, but it will work. I did it on hard. And uh, luckily enough, I didn't need to do it on this. So if you, if you have the same success I do, neither will you. And I make a mistake here. I don't go into this next area with an assault rifle because I pick up this thing thinking I can carry it through this door. And because he has to open the door, he drops the gun and it seals behind him and I lose my weapon. So do not do that. Make sure you've got the, the 74U because this next fight is made even more difficult because I don't have the fucking guns. And this is the second part of the game where I've given myself a penalty because I didn't pick up weapons like an idiot. You do not want to do that, guys. You want to avoid it, because this next section is, is not easy, and the less guns you have, the harder it is. The uh, there's a little secret achievement. Well, not secret, but it's it's one of those uncanny ones that you might not do, where you play in the water, and he says Marco, but nobody says Polo, so you get Marco Solo. And uh, this is the second hardest fight of the level. 
This is probably harder than the one we just did, actually. And there's a lot of dudes, so this first guy you can silent take down every time. He's going to drop the Tau Sniper, pick it up. It is super powerful and super useful. I absolutely fucking hate the scope on it. I don't know why they've ruined it with such a bad scope, but... I try and shoot that explosive there to kill that guy near the piano. It doesn't work, suffice to say. That's my bad. And what happens almost every time you do this is as soon as you start firing, a bunch of the normal dudes are going to rush up towards this balcony that you're on, towards these stairs. You want to kill as many as you can, and there is the heavy. A heavy's going to be coming for you now, and so is a bunch of normal dudes. And the heavy's going to have a shotgun. Best way to take him down is with the Magnum. I use the Magnum on that guy because my assault rifle's looking a bit weak. And look at that aimer. I hate that aimer so bad. It just bugs me. And right now, I'm not doing too well on the ammo front. I've got one bullet with my Magnum and I've got nothing in my assault rifle. I've got no grenades and this is all because I didn't pick the right gun up in the last section. So up comes the heavy. Up comes that guy over there. I'm going to have to take cover here, but he's coming up the stairs. I see him. I shoot the shotgun and I miss. This guy hits me from the side because he's clearly more accurate than me. That's when it, a grenade knocks you out of cover. You want to watch for that. There's a guy over there somehow not hitting me. The shotgun pistol really comes through for me then because usually it would miss at that range. And now it's just me and the heavy and I've got a moment of breathing time. Because it's a shotgun, I know I can beat him at that range. So use this these fleeting seconds to pick up some ammunition. And what happens next is there's a balcony above you with a bunch of snipers on and a guy with a grenade launcher. And the reason that this is a pain in the ass is you have to move down into the room to trigger those guys on the balcony. And then when you run back up to this part, enemies are going to jump over the balcony and attack you. And there's going to be normal dudes with guns and a couple of heavies. And when you die, you go back to wherever your checkpoint was and... When you trigger these guys on the balcony, it's effectively a checkpoint, but it doesn't make it any easier, and you think it would, but it doesn't. So, to trigger them, you need to hit these steps down here. So, as soon as you hit this, that's when the lasers turn up, and uh, run all the way back, all the way back to where you came in. Pick up as much ammo along the way as you can, and go all the way back up towards the top of these stairs. Up here is this lovely piece of metal, and what will happen is two guys are going to drop down off the balcony, one on the left, one on the right. They're going to be so focused on running towards you that they're not going to shoot you, and that's what keeps you alive. And all that's left now, I do believe, is the heavies. I think there's two of them. There's one, there's his shotgun. Luckily enough for me, his shotgun does not have the range that my assault rifle does. That doesn't mean he can't kill you. You need to use this cover really well, because if you don't, you will die. And um, just use your abilities, use your, your grenades, use whatever you've got to put him down as fast as possible. And as soon as he's down, I would probably say go and grab his shotgun, because you're probably going to be out of everything you've got. And there's the other heavy. Did you see him? He's just making his way up. There he is. A nice shotgun on shotgun action. He's throwing a grenade. Doesn't really matter as long as you can get away from it. Just keep hitting him with the shotgun. And as soon as he goes down, there we go. This is your breathing moment to pick up as much ammo as you can. And just look at those lasers. They are pointing at almost a physically impossible angle trying to shoot me because the AI's accuracy and aggressiveness is that high on crushing. He must be leaning over the balcony and pointing it with like his arms outstretched to the left of where his arms are pointing. There's no other way you could do what he's doing madness but you can exploit them just move to the, the adjacent sides of this room and snipe them and then once you've taken out both the sniper guys all you have to do is kill the grenade launcher dude and a bunch of guys are going to come from a door to my left when I'll show you in a moment and the reason I've been tentative here is because last time I was on this section before I died people jumped off the balcony I couldn't understand why they did it see what I mean that guy's just jumped off and it's almost like random and they always come in stacks of two and these guys are easily capable of killing you if you get unlucky, but that guy keeps picking grenades up for some reason. He keeps trying to throw a grenade, and I catch him every time. So, as soon as you've killed those two dudes on the roof, be aware that two more guys will spawn like they just did then. It seems to be kind of random, and that's why this fight sucks, because it's hard to control. But the only guy left is either the grenade launcher on the center, or the guy with the magnum. There could be both, so just be careful, because the grenade launcher will kill you instantly, and there's nothing worse than dying when you've just, you know, done six minutes of a fight. But there's that guy. I can't tell if he's the last guy. We'll soon find out. If you can hear talking, and you see this dude's running towards the door... No, no, there's a laser up there. My bad. So, you need to kill this one, and then the doorway down near the piano is going to open up, and three guys are going to come in through the room. And you do not have a checkpoint until you kill those three guys, so don't cock up right at the end. I've done it myself, and it sucks. But 
immediately once he's down, I come back over here. There's a grenade launcher there that I could be picking up, which will help later on. And do you see him? Oh no, there's nobody there yet. Also, oh there, has he? Has he? I can't tell. So now I'm trying to, I'm trying to. There we go. There's the guy. He's going to run to this doorway. There's three of them, and they're going to kick it open. And there's usually a bunch of explosive canisters to shoot, but I'd already shot them. So I throw a grenade and then I finish them off. But if you die on these enemies, you will go back to the last checkpoint. And the last checkpoint is when the snipers turned up and you do not want that to happen. As soon as all three of them are dead, you've done one of the hardest sections of the game. So congratulations on that. And what you've got to do now, once again, is pick up the grenade launcher. If you pick up the grenade launcher, it's going to make the next and very challenging fight a lot easier than it needs to be. And that's the cool thing that I like about Uncharted. The levels are challenging, some of the sections are very difficult, but they give you the tools to overcome. And there's some games that just expect you to overcome. This game gives you the assets needed to do so. And as long as you're intelligent enough to see them and to use them correctly, you won't have that much of, of an issue. Uh, I think there's a treasure down here. I've gone the wrong way like an idiot, but if you, if you go through the door and you go the opposite way, this will lead to where you want to go. Go on, Nathan. Go on. There you go. Back on track. But the the latter part of this level now is us stealthing our way down into the holds, and it's actually really fun. And these lights, the way that they worked, it really reminded me of the old Splinter Cells, how they used to have lights in random places just to show off the, the impressive lighting engine. The only difference is the light on this game is probably a million times better, but it, that's what it reminded me of anyhow. And it's just, you know, move from room to room, killing the dudes with your silent takedowns. You'll go down some steps, and then you'll see Sully in the chair in the hold. And that is the end of the level. But just take your time. Don't get too confident. You don't want to die needlessly. I've never died on that section, so you probably won't either. And just keep cruising for a bruising, quite literally. And this is the room, and what's going to happen here is I look around the room to see if I can find any weapons or any grenades or anything that helps me. Uh, I don't find any of them, but I still look, because that's what I'm like. And then once you move over to the, the guy in the chair, it's going to end the level, and I will see you in the next video. So as per usual, people, thanks for watching, and you take care now.